I'm always delighted to be with Saul Nuzis, who's been such a leader in the conservative movement and the Republican Party. Welcome to the Saul's Newsstand News Rewind for July 21st, 2023. Fox News reports Jason Aldean's controversial small town video cut by CMT song skyrockets to number one amid backlash. Jason Aldean has lost the support of country music television, with the network confirming to Fox News Digital it has pulled the musician's Try That in a Small Town music video from circulation. In the video, Aldean's lyrics are sung while news coverage from the 2020 riots illustrates his message. Aldean's tune has skyrocketed to success given all the controversy, sitting as iTunes' number one song at the time of publication. Aldean has received backlash, with some suggesting it is a quote, pro-lynching song, a narrative Aldean adamantly denies. On Tuesday, the artist addressed the controversial response to his song, saying, quote, There is not a single lyric in the song that references race or points to it, and there isn't a single video clip that isn't real news footage. And while I can try and respect others to have their own interpretation of a song with music, this one goes too far. An article from the Daily Caller reports, Democrat representative says Hunter Biden victim of two-tier justice system. Democratic New York Representative Daniel Goldman said on Wednesday that Hunter Biden is the victim of a two-tiered system of justice while on MSNBC. So there is actually no basis to say that this is somehow a politically, uh, somehow political interference or a weaponization, as they say, of the Department of Justice. In fact, based on my experience, I'm shocked that Hunter Biden was even charged with these crimes. If you look at the history of civil and criminal enforcement of tax issues and just look at Roger Stone's case, uh, he he effectively did the same thing as Hunter Biden and he simply paid a fine. So the fact that he He's even taking a plea deal, in my mind, demonstrates a two-tiered system of justice against Hunter Biden, not at all in favor of Donald Trump or the Republicans. Hunter Biden was charged with illegally possessing a handgun while on drugs in 2018 and with failing to pay federal taxes in 2017 and 2018. The president's son agreed to plead guilty to the tax misdemeanors and entered a probation agreement for the gun charge. He is unlikely to serve any jail time. The investigation began in 2018 and focused on Hunter's overseas business dealings, though it eventually narrowed. And finally, NBC News reports, Iowa's GOP caucus date is set, but timing New Hampshire's primary is not so simple. The Iowa Republican Party's decision to hold its traditional first-in-the-nation presidential caucuses on January the 15th would normally mean New Hampshire could go ahead and set its primary date. But the Democrats' move to change their nominating contests in 2024 has left New Hampshire's planning still unsettled. But it's not when Iowa Democrats caucus that matters to New Hampshire, it's how they caucus. After major changes in the 2020 caucuses meant to expand access for would-be caucus goers, Iowa Democrats are talking about going further, including potentially adding a mail-in option for those who cannot attend in person. To New Hampshire, that makes Democrats' Iowa caucus sound suspiciously like a primary. It all comes back to Democrats' decision to change their early state lineup after vote-counting problems plagued Iowa in 2020. South Carolina is set to hold the DNC's first officially sanctioned primary on February the 3rd, but New Hampshire officials are furious about the move and determined to undercut it, no matter what the punishment is. The DNC's official schedule would see New Hampshire and Nevada jointly holding their second primary after South Carolina. This week, we'll let former RNC Chairman Michael Steele have the last word. Hi, it's Michael Steele from a Republican National Committee chairman. I just want to give a shout out to my man, Jim Martin. What an incredible leader, 
uh, trailblazer in, in sort of creating a space for, for individuals, seniors, doesn't matter, to be a part of a national conversation on, on policy and, and efforts to, to grow our economy and pro provide a future uh, for the next generation. And 60 plus has always been there. It's always been that space. Uh, and it's been a real treat for me to not just know Jim, but to work with him over the years. And I just want to say, hey, uh, let's do what he does, right? Let's make it real. Let's keep it happening and, and change the course of our country. But most important, involve everybody, because that's what Jim has always been about. doesn't matter at the end of the day. Yes, 60, 70, 80, you're all in the game. And that's what it's about, being in the game. And that's what Jim does. And I'm so proud of him and so proud of this effort. And that concludes your Saul's Newsstand News Rewind for July 21st, 2023. For more political news faster, visit saulsnews.com.